Welcome back to my Loading Bench, everyone. If you guys are interested to see how the new 6.5 Creedmoor Lapua Brass compares against Norma or Hornaday, stick around. Welcome back to my Loading Bench, everyone. Before we get started today, I do want to thank all of my subscribers and commenters out there. I do appreciate your feedback. If you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing to get more content like this, and make sure you turn on the little bell icon to make sure you get notified when I post a new video. Now I'm sure some of you guys have been waiting for the new 6.5 Creedmoor brass as much as I have, and honestly, it's taken a ton of work for me not to get this stuff out and loaded, but to get my evaluation of the brass complete so I could share it with you guys. So please be patient with me. This is kind of the format that I picked. I really wasn't sure this was the format that I was going to go in, but it's kind of the way that turned out. So to start with, we'll talk a little bit about the sampling. To start with, I purchased three boxes of 100 of a Lapua brass, all the same lot number. The weight sort information that I'm going to give you is based on 300 cases. However, when I, we talk about the neck dimensions, we're only going to say I have evaluated 50 of these. So the brass we're going to be talking about today, I'm going to put the lot numbers on the screen so you guys can see. The um, I don't think reading the lot numbers off to you is going to be a big deal, but if they're going to be posted on the video so you can see a picture of the lot numbers on here. Our sample is going to contain a single 50 piece uh, lot of Hornady brass a 25 piece lot of Norma. And again, we're talking about 300 cases of Lapua. However, when we take some of the dimensions of the sampling, it's only going to be 50 pieces. Now, I thought of a hundred different ways of doing this. And so I thought instead of making this video horribly long and telling you a thousand charts and a whole bunch of statistics, I would try and keep it as short as possible. To get started, I'll probably throw a few pictures of the brass um, on the screen. I'll show you the lot numbers. The things that we did to evaluate the brass to start with was we take we took some measurements and we took some weights. And so I'm going to show you the weight spread of the Hornaday versus the Norma versus the Lapua. Now I'll show these charts individually. We'll talk about the Hornaday first. So on the 50 pieces, the chart will show you that the lowest weight out of the initial brass before any trimming or sizing operations or anything was done was 145.1 grains. The heaviest piece of brass was 148.6 grains. Now the, the chart is going to show you the spread. If we look at the chart, so the Hornady case, there were 50 cases evaluated. The heaviest weight was 148.6 grains and the lowest weight was 145.1 grains. So doing some quick math, three and a half grains, difference from top to bottom. The weight distribution on the Norma, again, was half the size of the Hornaday because we only have 25 pieces. This is the first time I've ever loaded any Norma brass, but I thought it would be good for the video to have a, another sampling besides the Hornaday. So the Norma brass has been out for a while. Nazar actually has an offering as well, but I didn't think I needed to have another sample to do this video properly. Now, the Pua brass has, for the weight sort information, has all 300 cases that I received. And so the chart for the Lapua cases has a much larger sampling. All of the same lot, however. So the heaviest cases were 165.5 grains. The lowest cases were 164.3 grains. However, if you remove three cases from the group, then your total weight goes from 1.2 down to one grain from top to bottom on the lot of 300. For this evaluation, I removed the lower three from the weight sort, took the next 50. The actual dimensions that I measure and we'll talk about for the rest from the 164.5, the 164.6, and the 164.7 grain Lapua cases. The rest I have weight sorted and kept as to the side. I thought about going through a whole bunch of brass on my neck wall thickness gauge, but I thought that would be about as entertaining as watching paint dry. I thought for our demonstration purposes today that maybe we would just go through the best and the worst of the lot just so you guys could see for yourself. I should mention that before I took all the measurements on these, that I resized these in, in my match grade bushing die as well as I re resize them with my mandrel die to make sure the necks were as straight and uniform as possible. So the average neck wall thickness of the Hornet was 0.676. The max was 1.25 thousandths. The min was 0.125 thousandths. Again, all these numbers, are, you know, decimal points in the thousands. Norma had a, a average neck wall thickness variation of 0.335. The max was 0.625, and the lowest was about 0.125. Now, the Pua cases, guys, keep in mind, again, only 50 cases I evaluated for the neck wall thickness because I did not go through and resize every single case in my lot. 
The average neck wall thickness variation in the Pua case is about 0.397 on the lot of 50. The worst case I find was about a thousandths in variation and the lowest was about 0.125 though as you'll see when I go through the demonstration here guys some of these are kind of subjective and hard to get that number on there you'll see when I put the gauge on there if you've never seen one of these before. Before we get into that measurement the other thing I'll share with you is the trim length on the 6.5 Creedmoor if you guys are unaware is 1.910 inches. The Hornaday's lowest value was 0.19125 inches. The longest was 1.9165 inches. The Norm Brass was much more uniform. The overall length variation was 0.19145 inches all the way to 1.9170 inches. Though the Pua Brass, this will shock no one probably who's ever bought in uh, a box of Pua cases, was all trimmed perfectly. The shortest cases were actually 1.909. The largest overall length of the case was 1.9105. So obviously those Lapua cases were right down to the exact thing. I also will mention that the Hornady cases were certainly not deburden chamfered. The Norma cases had certainly, uh, as well as the Lapua cases, had the inside neck mouth had been chamfered. Even though all the manufacturers tell you that you need to, uh, to resize anyway, certainly the Lapua cases and the Norma cases, much more of the case preparation had already been done for you. Okay guys, so here we are on the bench. I thought I'd try and give you guys a better option when we're measuring the neck wall thickness gauge so you can get a better idea of the worst and the best case in the lot and kind of go from there if you want to trust my measurements or not. So we're going to start off with the Hornady case. This was about the worst one that I could find in the lot. So I think I call this one 1.125. 1 so you can see as I turn this one, it's well over uh, a thousands in variation. Now, again, Hornady cases here. The this was about the best one out of the lot. There might have been a couple were about the same. So from top to bottom, you can see if I hold still and turn that, there's almost no variation of that needle. Um, so I think I called that 0.125. But you can see very, very little variation in the neck wall thickness. Now moving on to the Norma. This was about tied for the worst case that we could find out of the Norma. So there we go, starting, turning. You can see as we turn that just a little over half a thousandth. Give or take. Then we'll move on to the best case. And if I can hold still, you should see almost no movement at all whatsoever as we turn that case. So very good consistency. Now, the poor. So about a thousandth from top to bottom, somewhere close to that neighborhood anyway. Keep in mind, guys, I'm trying my best to, to stay here over as I hover over the camera and do these. So that was about the worst. Now the best. So if you can see if I can hold still as we spin that case, hardly any variation at all in the neck wall thickness gauge on this one. Riveting footage, I know you guys love to watch that dial indicator go. Now we'll probably change camera positions, guys, and we'll go back and we'll have our final thoughts. So guys, just in case you didn't already know, I thought I'd go over a couple more things, talk about the cases. If you've done any research on the Pua cases like I have, you're already going to know some of this stuff, but just in case you're new to the, you weren't even aware that the 6.5 creep more come out in Lapua, we'll just go over a couple different things, just things that you might want to know. The Norma Brass, just like the Hornaday, actually has a large primer pocket. So you can see the, the Hornaday and, and the Norma both have the large primer pocket, and this is a standard decapping pin out of my Hornaday set. You can see that obviously easily those are both going to go into there. 
um, though it does appear that the uh, the Norma might be slightly smaller, but it's probably just tolerance. Um, I'll do my best if I can get an actual reasonable photo of the inside of these cases, to, um, just to give you one more shot. The Hornaday I've had to go on all the rest of the cases I've done. I've actually had to deburr the flash hole if you guys are interested in stuff like that. And I will tell you, it appears to me, though I'll put a shot on the screen, that the, uh, I'm sure you can't see it when I put it in there, but the uh, the Norma brass looks like it's actually already had the flash hole deburred for you. So it looks a little bit cleaner inside. So why do I go bother to tell you that? The Pua. Lapua, I, I'm sorry guys, I, I'm horrible about pronouncing this kind of stuff. So Lapua, um, the, uh, they actually changed, this is a small rifle primer and not a large rifle primer like the other two cases that I have here. I believe that the Nosler also um, has the large and, and so the only one that has this is changed is the Lapua. Um, so again, small rifle primer and as you can see a standard decapping pin does not fit in there at all. So. One thing you might want to consider if you're going to get this, if you don't have, because I know I didn't have a way to decap this, I actually went and bought a, another decapping die from Redding. Um, this Redding die um, actually will go, and you can obviously see it will fit the Lapua cases, so you can actually deprime them. Otherwise, I would have no way of depriming um, these stinking things after I get them loaded. I'll show you the Redding die that I purchased. There's the part number. Uh, the 69100 small decapping pin for 22 cal up to 50. Um, I was confused on Midway's website and I thought I might have to actually order another decapping pin. Um, so I did that. However, I believe that these decapping pins are identical um, because obviously you can see the one that came in it perfectly fits the uh, the 65 Creedmoor and so I should have no problem decapping with that. Obviously as well as the extra decapping pin that I got obviously fits as well. Um, one thing of note, I didn't have another alternative or didn't see another quick alternative when I was looking for this. This die really isn't that expensive, guys. Um, it is more expensive than a standard decapping die, but I really only intend on using it for this because of the smaller pin. Um, a lot of people do mention that they've had problems uh, with these decapping pins breaking, so it doesn't break my heart that I have a spare. And uh, just so you're aware, um, I don't know that you'd want to use it on all of them, but yeah, it is the special hole for the special primer pocket that Lapua has on here. Um, after doing some reading online, I will tell you that some people have suggested to others that they actually ream out the hole to the bigger hole so that you can put a standard decapping pin down there. Do what you want, guys. It's your brass. I would not advise doing that simply because... Lapua theoretically says that through all the research that this is the best and they made it this size for a reason. So I, that's why I bought the extra decapping pin. I certainly don't plan on changing anything about the primer pocket on these for my brass. But teaching to their own. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Just kind of a quick video summarizing the results that I found in these very three specific lots. I certainly can't promise you that your lot will be exactly the same as my lot was. That's a very representative of the probably 200 pieces up into this point that I've opened of the Hornady Brass. This is the first 25 pieces of the normal, like I mentioned before, that I've actually used. Again, I'll try and throw some photos on the screen, um, give you guys some pictures of all of it so you can get a good idea of what it looks like and any physical differences if I can possibly get a good photo of the inside of that case. I will try to. I wouldn't plan on having to do a whole lot of flash hole deburring on the Lapua or the Norma. If you're that kind of guy, you're probably going to end up deburring the flash holes on your Hornady. All that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, if so, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I've always got more stuff coming out. If you're not familiar with the channel, I'm trying to publish a video every week. Most of the stuff I concentrate on is obviously 6.5 Creedmoor um, for my Ruger Precision Rifle. But I also do throw in a couple die reviews. I also throw in a couple other product reviews as well um, to try and keep it interesting. Like I did mention earlier in the, uh, in the video, also too, I should have a video coming talking about the Sinclair Mandrel die. Um, I, this was suggested by one of my viewers. I plan on doing a full review on that. This is how I, again, how I did size all of the brass inside before I did the measurement on there. You can put a new mandrel in this um, of any size you want. It has... Uh, that should give you a one thousandth neck tension, um, or if you get the uh, turning die, you can actually get two thousandths of neck tension if you want to change that. 
Um, for this particular, uh, for 6.5, I actually did get both uh, mandrels, and so I might do a comparison somewhere in the future of uh, another crazy neck tension variation video, guys, for those of the fans of the channel. Anyway, thanks for sticking out to the end of the whole video, guys. I really appreciate your time. I'll see you next week with another video. Stay safe in small groups.